Well, that's creepy. When I was in primary school, I was a friend with a girl named Audrey. Audrey moved to my town when we were both nine. She was a friendly girl with a very open personality, the kind of kid who could befriend anyone. She was well-liked by everyone in my class, but I became her best friend. We were inseparable from the moment our teacher picked me to show her around the school, and we bonded over our love of horses. She had one. I didn't. I soon invited her over to my house after school, and it became normal for us to spend our weekend afternoons up in my bedroom practicing corny dance routines or talking in the park behind her house. Audrey's parents were just as friendly and welcoming as their daughter, and I'd often sleep over there on the weekends. One weekend stands out in my mind more than others. In retrospect, it was an extremely traumatic thing for two young girls to go through, but at the time, the horror was overshadowed by the event that followed soon after, which I'll explain in a minute. Anyway, it was a Friday afternoon, and Audrey and I were at her house, and we were about to go brush her horse. Her name was Coco, and she was a velvety brown mare with a sweet temperament. We walked down to the paddock with a bucket of apples, and Audrey began calling for Coco. I remember hearing Audrey scream, and it took me a good ten seconds to find the source of her anguish. Coco was lying on her back, her legs bent at unnatural angles, and her head had been severed from her body and laid a few feet away. She looked like she had been dead for some time, since the flies were swarming around her glassy eyes and flew in and out of her mouth. There was a smell, too, like rotten fruit and meat that had gone bad in the sun. Audrey fell to her knees beside her beloved horse and sobbed, and I began to cry, too. We had both loved Coco, and I couldn't imagine who would want to hurt such a beautiful, gentle horse. We ran up to the house and told Audrey's parents. They were equally distressed and tried hard to console us as we sobbed out the story of what we had just seen. Audrey's father went down to the paddock to investigate and returned with a grim look on his face. He went into the other room and called the police. I heard him making a report as the rest of us sat at the kitchen table. I had stopped crying by then and sat on my hands, unsure of what to say to Audrey as she continued to sob in her mother's shoulder. Here is where it gets weird, and this part is important because I clearly remember watching Audrey's father digging a large hole in the paddock, and I remember him pushing the large horse into the pit, and he placed her head gently on top and covered the whole thing with dirt. Hell, I even remember the damn funeral we had for Coco. Audrey and I picked flowers, we both cried again, and Audrey's father dropped me home. He said that Audrey and I would have a sleepover another week once we both had time to process Coco's death. Audrey's father explained to my parents what had happened. He was noticeably shaken as he hopped back in the truck and drove away. My parents were great. They let me eat ice cream and I fell asleep on the couch watching a movie. I thought about Audrey and Coco all weekend and the more I thought about it, the more terrified I became. Who would do such a messed up thing? On Monday morning, I went to school. I was looking forward to seeing Audrey and making sure she was okay. She was waiting for me at the gate, as usual, and when I got out of the car, she ran over to me and greeted me excitedly, babbling about a new Bratz doll she had gotten over the weekend, asking me if I would be allowed over to her house that afternoon to see it. I can honestly say, I was surprised. I was expecting her to still be somber, still in mourning for Coco, as I was. But... I figured, hey, she wanted to forget about it. It had been such a horrible afternoon for both of us, so I went along with it and expressed my excitement to see her new doll. That afternoon, we walked to her house, and I instinctively looked towards Coco's paddock. I almost yelled out in surprise. There was Coco. She looked alive and well, and I was 99% sure it was her. I turned to Audrey and asked her cautiously if she had gotten a new horse. She shook her head and laughed at me. You know I'm not allowed another horse, silly. That's Coco, she exclaimed, looking at me like I was dumb. I stared back at her incredulously. What was she doing? But Audrey, I cautiously replied, Coco died. Audrey looked shocked, shaking her head again as she responded. 
What? No, she didn't. She's right there. She pointed at the brown mare, identical to Coco, and we both stared out into the paddock. I was starting to feel like this was a bad joke. I, I couldn't understand why Audrey was acting like this. No, Audrey, I said in a firm voice. We found Coco in the paddock on Friday afternoon. She was dead. Your father buried her. We were both really upset, I stated, starting to feel frustrated that she was behaving like none of that even happened. Now Audrey looked annoyed. Why would you even say that? She bit back at me. She had a strange look on her face, a look of confusion mixed with something like anger. Or maybe it was fear. We had our first fight that afternoon, and I continued to state that Coco was dead, and Audrey kept insisting that she wasn't. It got pretty heated, and I walked home, tears of frustration streaming down my face as Audrey watched me leave. She looked upset, but I was too angry and confused to make up with her at the time. Now I wish I had. I didn't tell my parents about our fight, just said that Audrey had homework to do, and so I had gotten bored and come home. That night I sat in my room, wondering why Audrey would act like Coco hadn't died. Was she too upset to acknowledge it? Had her parents really bought her an identical horse two days later and somehow made out like it was Coco? But we had watched her father bury Coco. It, it just made no damn sense. The next day at school, Audrey wasn't there. I didn't go to her house after school and she didn't come over to mine. That night, I was watching TV in the lounge room when there was a knock at the door. My mother answered it to see Audrey's parents standing in the doorway, looking distraught. From what I could gather from their frantic conversation, Audrey was missing. They hadn't seen her since that morning when she left for school. But Audrey hadn't been at school. Our teacher had confirmed that. My mother called me into the hallway and asked me when was the last time I saw Audrey. I cried and began to explain our fight the previous afternoon, but I made out that we had been fighting over her new brat style, as I still didn't understand what had happened with Coco. Audrey's parents thanked us and left. They would let us know if they heard from her, the police had been called, and people were out searching. My parents decided to join the search, leaving me at home to put myself to bed. I was so worried. I knew our fight had upset Audrey, but had it upset her enough to make her run away? Surely not. I tried to convince myself that she would be okay. She... she had to be. Our town searched for Audrey for weeks, and that turned into months. I had a lot of time off school. I was inconsolable. When it was nearing the three-month mark, a farmer in the next town over found her body in a creek. She hadn't been dead very long and she was hung by the neck. There were no witnesses, but the news report said she had been found near an old cabin containing a length of rope, some tin food, and the velvety, brown skin of a horse. We later found out that Coco had been killed that Friday afternoon so many months ago. Her killer had dug up her body in the dead of night, gutted the front of her, and sewed her head and torso back together with expert precision. Somehow, he had convinced Audrey that he was her dead horse. Don't, don't ask me how. Maybe she just wanted to believe that Coco was alive. Maybe he drugged her. What I do know is that that sick creep hid in the forest behind her house, and only came out when Audrey was alone. Her parents never saw him, never knew that Coco had come back to life. Sometimes, I wonder if I had told them about the real reason for our fight on the day before she went missing, Audrey would still be alive.